So now that we're doing this and I can mostly run on autopilot, um, I need to tell you guys about the dream that I had last night. I know Nezu at least will appreciate this. Um, I was dreaming of a D&D Let's Play show, or a live play show, where they, someone had made a, um, they were just kind of demonstrating this, but they had made an encounter. It was supposed to be CR42, which for reference, the highest actual um, challenge rating in 5th Ed D&D is 30. That's the Tarrasque. Um, but it was five separate entities that you fought one right after the other. And uh, they were like vaguely based on the, the uh, Horsemen of the Apocalypse. So the first one was Pestilence. And like some of this I kind of backfilled in like a half awake. Yeah. Like sometimes I will have um, dreams like this and I'll like come up with some stuff about it afterwards where I'm not quite awake yet. But anyway, but the first one was Pestilence, which is a large, like, 15-foot-tall red bull. No jokes. I figured it has... Most of them have, like, a some kind of aura around them that's always in effect. Um, that one, it just is constantly dealing little bits of damage. It's like a D4 damage to everybody around it at the start of its turn. And I don't know really what most of these things did. Oh, also, it's worth mentioning that this was being run for, like, 30 people. It was just meant to be a one-shot, complete fight. Nothing else. But it's all these ridiculously overpowered, like, epic plus-level characters. So after that one, you fight Famine, which is, like, a nine-foot-tall dude... Um, with kind of like papery skin, kind of looks like a mummy who's, um, who fights like a monk. He's got like a two-handed staff of some kind. Um, I don't really know what it would do. And I figure his, his aura thing is it makes everybody around him hungry. So you get just disadvantage on saving throws. After he goes down, the next one is, um, wait, what are the... The Four Horsemen. Oh, actually, the next one should be War. There is no War. I guess the first one was War, and then that was Famine, and so the next one is Pestilence. So I got that wrong, because in the dream it was Pestilence, Famine, and Plague, but Pestilence and Plague are kind of the same thing. War would be the bull, because then, you know, dealing constant damage, that makes sense. So pest actual Pestilence's thing is just you take poison damage, or you get poisoned, when you're around it. And the big thing is there's no saving throw for any of this stuff. It's just, if you're near them, you are poisoned. But then at this point, death shows up. And death is like, oh, it's not even, it's not even power word kill. It's so much worse. Death is like a 15 foot tall skeleton. And when I say skeleton, I mean, it's a big dude with like a Gloomweaver style skull for a face, um, real big horns. But he's not skeletal, he's got, like, meat on him, but you can see the bones also. So, fun times. And he just sort of moseys on up into the battlefield, and every creature that he can see dies. Just immediately, everyone is dead. This being 30-plus epic-plus level characters, it's not a huge setback, and they have to just, you know, waste a couple of rounds rezzing people, but they get everybody back into the fight. And at this point, it shifts from me watching something to be me being part of it. So my character decides it's time to leave. Like, I see some people with swords over their, their shoulders heading out to fight death. But me and this other dude are like, now we're gonna, we're gonna start heading out just in case, you know, we don't need to be... We're good here for now. And as we're walking away, because this is now apparently like... So the battle's being fought on a field in front of... Like a facade, like it's kind of like a Roman aqueduct. Because you got arches. It's, it's, a, it's a wall and there's like windows and stuff and everything. And there's 
tables laid out, and that's where people are getting up to go and fight this thing from. Um, we're headed back into like some caves because this is in the side of a mountain or something. But as we're getting deeper into the caves, we hear run, everybody evacuate because the fifth one showed up because they beat death. And at this point, it's like, yeah, we, we both look at each other. We go running into the caves. Okay, you stay here and funnel everybody left. I'll keep going. I go down into where it like opens up into a library. I'm like, everybody out of the building. Go, go, go. But uh, the fifth one, and like this is, this is stuff that I just sort of knew, being part of the dream. Um, the fifth one was destruction. And in the dream, it just looked like a much larger bull that was also skeletal and covered in meat. Um, I think I would, if I was actually going to do this, it would be like a cross between a minotaur and a centaur, which is skeletal and covered in meat. But yeah, it basically just comes charging in and just starts destroying this entire compound. And that was about where the dream ended. And again, I think if I was going to run it, if I wanted to cool unfair ability for it. It would just be immune to damage for a certain number of rounds. It has all the aura effects of the first three, not the killing effect because that's a little too much. And uh, like all of its hits are instant crits, stuff like that. So yeah, that's my uh, that's my weird wacky dream. Nah, who needs saving throws? You're like level 25, you don't need them. But yeah, that sent me off on like this uh, rabbit hole today of what's the biggest CR monster in D&D? And the answer is CR is not equal across editions, go figure, because the biggest one is actually 50, but that's in 3rd ed and it meant something different back then apparently. How do I destroy an environment card? 